welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History. If you don't know me by now, I'm Claire Ridgway and I'm the author of several history books, well, Tudor history books, including one called On This Day in Tudor History, which has served as the inspiration for these uh, daily uh, talks about Tudor events. Now, on this day in Tudor history, the 2nd of July, 1489, Thomas Cranmer, which is actually a really hard name to say with the N first, um, Archbishop of Canterbury, was born in Aslockton in Nottinghamshire. So he's our birthday boy of today. Now, I really ought to give you an overview of the life of this incredible Tudor chappie. But actually, instead, I'll give you a link to read an article, a sort of a short biography um, on his life and his career. And instead, today, I'll actually share with you 13 things, 13 facts that you might not know about this fascinating Tudor birthday boy, just to mix things up a bit and make things a bit more interesting. Okay, number one. His first wife, Joan, sadly died in childbirth, and sadly as well, the baby died too. Number two, his patrons were the Boleyn family. He was very much supported by the Boleyn family, uh, Anne Boleyn's family, and in fact, Anne Boleyn too. And he lodged in Thomas Boleyn's property, Durham House, on the Strand in the summer of 1529. And it was there at that house that he wrote his report concerning the king's question, i.e. his report about the annulment, Henry's great matter, Henry's uh, quest for an annulment of his first marriage to Catherine of Aragon. Fact number three, Cranmer was sent as an ambassador to Emperor Charles V's court in 1532 and it was there on the continent that he was able to see the effects of the Protestant Reformation and it was also there that he met his second wife Margaret or Marguerite's uh, so, yes, he was married twice. Number four fact, he was Elizabeth I's godfather. Uh, not only did he perform um, her baptism ceremony, but he also stood as her godfather in September 1533. Number five, as a result of the 1539 Act of the Six Articles, which uh, reversed some of the religious reforms that Cramner had helped bring in and sort of reaffirmed uh, traditional Catholic doctrine, so took things back a bit, Cramner was forced to send his wife, uh, Margaret or Marguerite, and his daughter, Margaret, abroad for safety. And in fact, they stayed abroad for the rest of King Henry VIII's reign. Um, the couple, Thomas and Marguerite, uh, had a son, Thomas, later after being reunited when Edward VI came to the throne. Fact number six. Now, you possibly uh, know this one. As well as being the man that was chosen to inform King Henry VIII of the allegations that had been made about his fifth wife, Queen Catherine Howard's sexual past in 1541, Cranmer was also heavily involved in the subsequent investigations and interrogations. It was him that went to Hampton Court Palace where Catherine was and who interrogated the weeping, distraught queen, uh, which I think he found very difficult. <clears throat> Fact number seven. When King Henry VIII was dying in January 1547, Cranmer held his hand and he gave the king a reformed statement of faith instead of the usual Catholic last rites. So he was the one holding the king's hand as the uh, king sort of slipped away. Number eight. Now, he wanted to show his grief for his master, the king's death. 
and so he grew a beard, especially to show his grief. And this was also, his beard was also a symbol of his rejection of the old church and its ideas, because it was usual to be uh, clean shaven if you were a member of the clergy. So he grew a beard uh, for the king and for his rejection of the old ideas. Fact number nine. It was Archbishop Cramner who crowned Edward VI in February 1547, which you probably know. But did you know that Edward was the first monarch to be anointed as supreme head of the English church and that it was Cramner that did this anointing? Number 10. In 1553, when um, Edward uh, was making plans for the succession because Edward was ill, it was actually Cramner who was one of the people who was opposed to Edward VI's device for the succession, his plans to disinherit his half-sisters. Edward believed that uh, Elizabeth and Mary were incapable of inheriting his throne because he saw them as illegitimate. But Cramner reluctantly signed the documents when Edward uh, explained to him that he ought to respect the king's will. So he did support him in the end. Fact number 11. On the 8th of August 1553, it was Cramner who performed the Protestant funeral rites for Edward VI's burial in the Henry VII Chapel at Westminster Abbey. Now, this was the first monarch's funeral to use Protestant funeral rites, so it was quite a big thing. And this was in Mary I's uh, reign, and of course Mary I went on to bring uh, England back into the uh, Catholic fold, but she allowed her brother, because she knew that obviously his faith differed from hers, she allowed him to have Protestant rites for his burial, and it was Cramner who carried them out. Number 12. Now, when Mary I came to the throne, a lot of Protestants, uh, prominent Protestants and uh, Protestant clergy uh, went, fled into exile abroad. But Cramner chose to stay. This was something that he decided to do. It wasn't because he couldn't. He actually actively chose to stay in England. And of course, that led to him uh, being arrested, um, him being accused of heresy, and eventually being burnt at the stake for heresy. So he made a decision, probably knowing the risks um, and decided to stay in England, and that led to his undoing. Number 13. Now, I'll leave you with a more well-known fact. The fact that uh, Cramner is uh, often called the architect of the English Reformation due to his key role in the foundation of the Church of England, sort of as we know it today, and his involvement, his heavy involvement, his editing, of the Book of Common Prayer, which of course is still used today in the Church of England. So I'll leave you with a, that's a more well-known fact, I think. But I'll give you a link to an article which goes into a bit more detail on his life and career. But I just wanted to share with you those 13 uh, facts that you might not know about uh, the fascinating uh, Tudor birthday boy, Archbishop Cramner, who was born on this day in Tudor history. So. I hope that has, uh, has honoured uh, his, his memory. Okay, well, I'll be back tomorrow with another Tudor event, whether it's uh, a birth, marriage, death or execution. Uh, you can subscribe by clicking round about there. You can, of course, yes, Ari is meowing and asking you to subscribe. She thinks it's very important, don't you, Ari? Yes, you need to subscribe and you need to hit the bell to be notified as well and you need to give me a like. After all, I am the mother of cats, mother of dogs, and mother of Tudor history. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.